Coming introducing the first presentation this afternoon, the speaker to start us off is Jen Neng Wang of the University of Washington. The presentation centers on the electronic visual monitoring challenges and developments with AI. Welcome, Jen Neng. This is Professor Chen Neng Huang from the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering, the University of Washington at Seattle. It is my greatest pleasure to share some of my existing efforts on electronic visual monitoring for AI Ocean. We have been very lucky to collaborate with many marine scientists from several fishery science centers of NOAA, including Alaska, Northwest and the Southeast on this electronic monitoring innovation project in the past 10 years. The purpose of electronic monitoring of fishing activity is to systematically survey the fish species and sizes during the fish catching, either with shooter based on board monitoring or the long line real catch monitoring, so as to achieve real time reporting and the regulation compliance. With the collected big visual data, we aim to achieve fish counting, length measurement, and species identification during the catching activity using visual data from onboard cameras. Through also working with Alaska Fishery Science Center, we had the opportunity to work with an EDF project on shooter-based discard monitoring about the fish counting, length measurement, and the species identification of West Coast fishing activity. Here is a, an example of the onboard camera shoot and the observer to monitor the operations. West Coast shooter data set has lots of fish slime on the shooter background, as well as the camera lens blurring due to water splash. To overcome these challenges, our detection segmentation, lens measurement, tracking, and the species identification require special attention. That is, we combine the deep learning algorithm with a lot of computer vision technique, along with temporal consistency of video object tracking to overcome the errors caused by the misdetection, unreliable segmentation, and the tracking. Here are two qualitative examples of fish counting and the length estimation from West Coast data. The species identification performance of the West Coast data set where only 17 classes that have more than 15 annotated samples are chosen for deep learning the classifier. With this amount, the limited amount of the training samples from West Coast, we need to perform a lot of the data augmentation and start with a pre-trained AI CMA model with Alaska data set, fine-tuned on the West Coast data set. The achieved overall top one identification accuracy amongst 17 classes is 86%. On the other hand, we can achieve much better identification accuracy on Alaska shooter data set collected on 2015, 16, and 19 with 98 different classes. Of course, the Alaska, data, Alaska shooter data set has much more uh, annotated training samples with very few slime on the shooter background near the shooter camera blurring. Moreover, our special attention on the long tail training strategy can achieve comparable accuracy even on those minority classes with much fewer training samples. More specifically, it will be even better to directly use the gender identification model from Alaska data set we call the source domain for identifying fish from West Coast data set, the target domain, which has fewer and noisy samples without the fine tuning to avoid the laborious annotation efforts. Unfortunately, when comparing the distribution of nine overlapping classes shown in the border phase in this table between these two data set, 
even though both of them are long tail distributed, we find that they are quite different. And those overlapping West Coast data set are not a dominant classes in Alaska data set. This is why the long tail recognition strategy was used to train the, on the Alaska data set, that is the source domain data set. In addition to the distribution difference between these two data sets among those overlapping classes, this is the so-called label shift between source and the target domain. Their appearance are also quite different. That is the so-called domain shift. This appearance difference between two domains can be further justified through comparing the embedding features extracted by the trained AI CNN identification model where silence of dimension of the embedding feature of Alaska data set can be easily visualized by two dimension as shown in the TSNE plot. Note that species embedding features tend to separate into clusters through the use of metric learning, where data with the same classes are forced to be close to each other, while different classes are being pushed apart. One clustering example of a short spine only head is shown on the right picture. Note that the embedding feature of West Coast data set based on the AI CNN model are also illustrated in TSNE plot, where Rex saw and the spotted red fish cluster are shown. They have quite different embedding features with those of Alaska fish of the same kind. If we intended to perform fish identification on West Coast data set, without the fine tuning on the trained AI classifier from Alaska data set to avoid the laborious annotation effort on the target domain of the West Coast data set. It is highly desired to overcome the domain shift due to appearance changes, which require an unsupervised domain shift technique so that the trained classifier based on source domain, that is the Alaska data set can be easily adapted to classifying West Coast data set once their extracted feature from both domains are better aligned. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. That was uh, fascinating, Jen Ning, and it reminded me of uh, one of the earlier presentations this morning that you might not have been able to be awake for or might have been past your past sleeping time, where they found similar problems when moving their models between boats. And what they, they found and what others found over the presentations of the day that just the layout of the vessel and the, the different light climates that the footage was taken in needed the, uh, the model to be retweaked almost between vessels. And uh, this, is, this is interesting because I think if we are able to develop a sharing model, we have to also work out where these biases are coming from and work out techniques so that others can learn from your experience of moving between uh, Alaska and the West Coast. Is there, was this a surprise to you considering you'd done the training and were, were there any other surprises which, which came to you in your work? Just some idea of uh, the kinds of things that, that, that took you by surprise. Oh, okay. So for most the practical AI application, we have to deal with all different kinds of the, uh, domain adaptation, domain shift. Domain shift uh, normally are people divided into two different types. One is the distribution difference. The other one is called the appearance difference. And both of them require very careful um, technique to uh, take care of this uh, use, using the old training model to uh, new data. And we came out with uh, two different techniques. One is what we call it the long tail recognition. Once you are able to, no matter the distribution or what type of distribution, as long as you are make sure, you are able to make sure all different kinds of fish classes can be correctly recognized or identified with equal uh, accuracy. Then uh, doesn't matter the new type of the, doesn't matter the new type of the data, what type of new distribution are, there, we are still able to uh, uh, equally uh, uh, identify them. The second one is appearance change. Appearance change, uh, people call it uh, domain shift. And we came out with something uh, which uh, we are getting a very uh, uh, 
skilled on a uh, transfer from one domain, which has different kind of appearance. And this is really a big surprise. I didn't really notice the same model and we send the Alaska fish compared to the West Coast fish. Their embedding features are very different. And we have to try to shift our model without the labeling of the new data set, we are still able to correctly recognize it. And this kind of technique is called the domain adaptation. And we are applying that and see some new progresses. It's, it reminds me of the time zones we're in. Some people are going to sleep and some people are waking up, but we're in the same day. Uh, Matt, <laughs> do you have any question for us, please? Yeah, thanks so much, Chen Lang. Um, the, something that came up um, today, this morning, and also um, a couple of days ago, um, was uh, the integration of uh, 3D data um, into uh, combined with texture data from images. Um, what's, you're obviously uh, making clear breakthroughs using 2D textures here. Um, what's your opinion on the use of 3D data to enrich the, the, the learning and training data set? Okay. Um, if you think about uh, inside the shoot, okay, if we know exactly what is the lens between camera and the surface, infer the 3D information to know the exact size, the lens of the fish, that's pretty straightforward in the computer vision field. Really, we do not need the stereo camera or the 3D camera in order to know the size, to know the length of the fish. So we don't really use that, but we do have another experience. When we are doing this uh, long line, rail catching, and the camera is put outside the boat and is uh, looking at the fishing activity, when the fish being captured up and the fish are uh, because of the uh, catching process of the fish deform a lot. So we want to know the exact size of that fish being, a cage, being catch up during this uh, uh, pulling up. We find stereo camera still cannot compete the performance of monocular camera to get the exact size because using the mono monocular camera, we have a lot of uh, computer vision technique. We are able to uh, perform uh, the deformation, estimate the deformation, and eventually to be able to exactly estimate the size. Compared to if you use a stereo camera, yes, you can get uh, some kind of the uh, uh, sizes, 2D sizes of the deformed body, but not a deformed body is not the exact size, the length of the fish. So you still need to expand it but that deformation using monocular, monocular camera turns out to be easier to, to perform. And also using the technique of this uh, uh, monocular CNN uh, AI model, we are able to achieve better performance than using uh, three-dimensional information. And the three-dimensional ca uh, camera system, no matter you use stereo or you, you, you even uh, can use a uh, LiDAR or whatever, they are not really in terms of information reach, they are not as good as monocular camera. So in terms of species identification, lens measurement, we continue to stay with a monocular camera. Can I just ask one more question, Kim? Sorry. No. Is that, is that okay? Um, uh, we, we had a presentation earlier of yesterday um, about um, species with very limited data sets, uh, such as, uh, um, sharks in particular uh, and there was a, a, I actually suggested that gathering biometric data um, may using photogrammetry for example may be one option for understanding the characteristics of telling one species from another do you have any solutions when you work with monocular vision that you think might be useful uh, to a species where there are very limited data sets can you say that again? I'm sorry, I didn't really catch your question. No problem. So we, we have some species uh, which are obviously really important 
uh, when they have a limited data set, uh, for example, some species of sharks, mm -hmm. we have limited images. Um, and uh, we were talking yesterday whether or not um, three dimensional data from photogrammetry could enrich uh, biometric information um, relating to species identification and, and discriminating between species that look very similar. I was just wondering if there was any work that you'd done using your monoc monocular uh, methods, uh, which which might be useful in that process where where, where it's very limited in, in training data. Okay, I got it. Yes, number one to recognize to recognize a very uh, uh, we call it a tail tail set of the data, which has only few training data. Certainly, just for identification purpose, sometimes a two-dimensional monocular camera are good enough. But if you really want to introduce the biometric information and also the three-dimensional information into it, these days, a lot of monocular camera, we are able to just use a one single view or maybe a multiple view to recover the 3D shape and even a 3D appearance. So this is called one view, one, one view to create a 3D model. And this has been done in many other fields, not really for species, uh, for fish type of things, but it can be done. And we have shown uh, we are able to use one single view to recover the whole bird, three-dimensional bird model. And you can look at, after one single view, you are able to look at any kind of view of that bird. But you need to see a lot of similar bird from different kinds of species of bird. And then uh, the AI model is able to perform some kind of generalization. They don't see any kind of bird in one single view. You are able to create the three-dimensional model of that bird easily. Thank you very much, Dan Ning, and uh, for, for your you. team at the University of Washington. Thank you.